Hi, in this uh, lecture, yeah, we're covering goodwill impairment. So goodwill has its own special impairment test, and like, but like all the other impairment tests, it must be done at least annually. There is a step zero, and it's a qualitative assessment, and it's optional. Um, and it, the, the standard actually says it is more likely than not that the fair value of the unit is less than its carrying amount, which means you would go on to step one. Okay, um, they call it step zero because they already had step one and two. So we don't have to do this. Uh, I'm not gonna give a case or a problem with it. It could come up in a uh, conceptual question. Okay. Uh, but we are going to do step one and step two. So there is a test and at step one, the question is impaired, yes or no. And similar to other multi-step impairment tests, if it's no, you stop. You don't even have to look at the second part. If it's yes, then you have to do the second part, okay? And this is maybe one of the most challenging um, parts of intangible accounting is goodwill impairment. And one of the things that makes it a little tricky is uh, unlike, let's say, for limited life where you were given the fair value on the uh, measure of the impairment loss, here you have to calculate it, okay? So you're gonna Im calculate this implied value of goodwill, uh, or implied goodwill value. Um, it's a estimate of what goodwill is today. So it's like fair value of goodwill, but uh, you can't call it fair value because fair value is uh, an arm's length transaction between unrelated and willing parties, meaning a sale price. And you know, you don't like go out to the Walmart and say, hey, where's your goodwill? You know, it's not sitting out there on a on a shelf or you don't have somebody out in the muck saying, hey buddy, would you like to buy some Goodwill? It's just not a, it's not a marketable asset. It's Goodwill is just, you know, the difference between the purchase price and the liquidation value of a company. So there's, there, it's not a transferable asset as such. It cannot have a, a fair value. It has an implied value or an estimate, still an estimate of Goodwill either way. But you have to be a little sensitive to the fact that fair value has a very specific meaning in um, accounting, it's a market value or an estimated market value. Okay, so in this example, um, sometime in the past, they bought the company for 20 million, and we have the book and the fair value of the items below their, their assets and liabilities. They recently received a $19 million offer. Now, you may say, oh, that's not great because it went down. Um, maybe or maybe not. You don't know. You don't know how much they they may have sold stuff out of the company and other returns they got. Um, so anyway, regardless, it, the 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 market price of the company as a whole declined. Okay, so for doing the impairment, we just need the fact. We just need the purchase price, an estimate of the value of the whole company today. So during the year, the government passed a law permitting reimportation of drugs which would you know be competition so and drive their prices down even on their own products so this would be if you wanted to do a step zero this would be clearly we have to do step one it's good information that's quali qualitative that would suggest you know there's a problem um, determine whether it's good uh, goodwill's impaired and if so record the impairment okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to compare the book value to the the fair value of the company. So the net book value is um, 31 minus the seven. So it's book value, not fair value. So that's 24 million. And the fair value is less than that. So it's saying, boy, your, your accounting is saying your book value of equity is 24 million, but the market is saying that you can only sell the company for 19 million. So the market value of equity is only, so this is essentially MVE market value equity. And this is essentially book value of equity. And it's overstated. You don't want to overstate the equity. So it's impaired, 
All right. Now, I, all I have to say about this is um, be careful um, because a common mistake in goodwill impairment is just getting this flipped. That people say, obviously, you know, 24 million, 24 million is greater than 19. No big surprise. All right. But you misinterpret the inequality and then say that it's not impaired. So the way I like, like to think of it is a zero dollar fair value is bad. So, you know, if you can't sell the company at all, of course, the goodwill is going to be impaired. So just think low fair value is bad. Like there's that trash dump with the nuclear waste up in North County in St. Louis. And there's an underground fire. Literally, this is true. So there's this big trash dump with the underground nuclear fire in North St. Louis. Nobody wants to buy that from that company. That's just a huge, huge uh, liability. So that company should have no goodwill on its books whatsoever. All right, so low fair value bad. But uh, just be sure you remember how to interpret this. Low fair value, then it's impaired. Okay, um, so in the first thing you have to do is calculate the implied value of goodwill. So you have the goodwill carrying value. Let's see, where are you? Five million. And then we have to calculate the implied value of goodwill. Okay. So um, actually, let me break out that calculation a little bit. I jammed it all in here in the note. But the implied value IVG of goodwill, it's like the goodwill calculation, except it's just an estimate. So originally, in fact, they had 5 million of goodwill recorded. So what we're saying is if the parent company bought this company today, how much goodwill would there be? So that equals, if you had goodwill, you'd look at 25 minus seven. Let's see, the purchase price, 19 million, right? And over the liquidation value, which is 25 million minus 7 million, which equals 19 million minus 18 million equals 1 million. So this is an estimate, estimated value of goodwill today. So it makes this problem a little more complicated that instead of getting the estimate, as you do with the other impairment problems, you have to calculate your estimate from the purchase price and the liquidation value. So this goes right here. Your book value minus your implied value of goodwill equals the loss. Okay, so it's on your books for five million. You estimate it's worth a million. So your loss is four million. Okay, and the new carrying value is one million. So that's goodwill impairment. Um, it's a little tricky. Practice it, do a few more extra problems. The ones in your book are, are very good. But remember, step one, low fair value is bad. Okay, if it's a low fair value, lower than the book value of equity, then it's impaired.